All right, hello you beautiful sons of bitches. We are doing another commentary today. Uh, this is actually going to be over my own match. Okay, this is back in 2013. This guy I'm going against, he's either a brown belt or a black belt. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. They weren't exactly sure, but he was definitely an upper belt. And this is one uh, weekend after I just got my blue belt. So this is the very first tournament I ever got to do with blue belt. It's a Nogi expert division, and I want to see how I was going to do. Okay, and again, this is back in the day when I didn't give a fuck about belts, which... You know, that may surprise you given my current views on belts and how obviously important they are. Guys, I don't give a fuck what belt you are, okay? That doesn't matter. It's about the athlete. Um, today, we actually have Bird on the call. Bird is here to talk shit. All of it. All the shit, okay? So let's get going. It only goes to 720p, and that's fine. That's okay. So, look at me. I got the turtleneck on. That's Amos. That's Amos' friend talking. I bowed before every match, by the way. I was very weird. You look as small as I do now. I was 180 still. Okay. Oh, never mind. God, I needed to learn how to fucking wrestle. What is... Like, what... what? What's the point of any of these types I'm grabbing? Why do I want them? You know, like... I oh, know, but he's... No, I had his wrist control. I'm winning the wrist control, kind of. And, you know, now I'm letting him fucking dominate my head, so things are getting a little sketchy. I'm bouncing on my toes like I look like guy, I know what I'm doing. with his other arm. No, but after a couple of snap downs like that, I'm probably not going to keep standing with this guy back then, you know? Like, all I did was judo back then. I was reliant on the ability to throw someone. Oh, my God. That's, guys, that's why you get in a fucking stance. <laughs> like, seriously. Look at, like, how easily that guy just takes me down. I'm fucking standing straight up. I'm playing the fucking slap fest. And then he just fakes and shoots in. Like, it doesn't take any effort from him at all. I just go onto my back into close guard. I'm like, all right, cool. You know, you took me down. I'll just tap you anyways, fuck it. Like, that's always gonna work. Um, it's not. So, yeah. Learn how to wrestle. I wish I had learned a lot earlier. Hey guys, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel grow. We really appreciate the fuck out of everyone. We're having a great time making these videos and we want to see it get as big as it possibly can. So now I'm in close guard, okay? This was back when I did all flower sweeps and all Kimura traps for the most part. You see how there I was actually trying to kick up and over for the Matrix or something like that. No, he just fucking easily passed my guard. Not, did I say Matrix? I didn't know what the fuck Matrix was back then. But it really was like all flower sweep. I'm, oh, I was going to go to X guard is what I was probably going to do. Because uh, I actually used to go... Yeah, he is. I used to go from closed guard to X guard a lot. Um, just when I really needed to sweep someone. I don't know. I did a lot of weird shit back in the day. There is still some stuff from back then that I still do. Uh, for example, I remember how this match goes, and the thing that I do to this guy, I still do today, because it's fucking money, okay? So, what I'm doing right here is not optimal at all. Um, ooh, what's going on here? You load so, like, yourself up to get underneath really deep. Yeah, the, the, the fact that I'm just kind of sitting up to him, though, like, this looks like I want to hip bump him, but I don't actually go for a hip bump, okay? I'm just kind of floating. Right there to go underneath, That's just exactly what you did. Did I go to hip bumping first? No, I did not. <laughs> like, I didn't actually do it. No, like you, you right here, you're gonna hip bump the guy and then you're no, gonna knock him he, over. He's right too forward. No, you're not gonna knock him over, but you're gonna make him come down. And then from that, you know, like uh, I would go for an overhook and I would isolate his arm and start thinking omoplata or something like that from the hip bump or any of the good hip bump follow ups. But he is pretty forward. If I fucking open my foot and put that foot anywhere near the ground right now with how he is, he's gone. Like, he's, look, he's pretty, ooh, he is actually kind of flat-footed. Maybe I could get away with it. He's not, like, on his toes, ready to jump. You know what I mean? Um, at the very least, I should switch this to a guillotine and just bring him back down to the mat with me. I shouldn't really just go down for free. One thing I do like that I did, and this is something I, li I like to tell people if, to do, if you look, is... Head, you could have got it. Yeah, it's just the fact that I went from sitting up to that guy, from being off the mat, and then as I went back down, I used that to dive under his leg. And then I'm able to use that to start kicking up and around for uh, Kimura traps and arm bars and stuff. You can see I'm actually still under his leg. I'm being way too loose and cavalier with this closed guard right now, though. Nothing's even closed about it. Now this fucking guy who, uh, he kind of like almost easily passed me earlier is out and open right now. Ooh, he's fucked right there. That was it. I should have uh, took that omoplata. Did you see it? I actually didn't. What? Right here. Look. Right here. If I pinch my elbow off right there, that hand is stuck. If I come around with two hands and two on one this arm, I can just pull it through and the guy is fucked. Or I can use my right hand to separate his head a little bit, make this shoulder a little weaker. This was back, uh, I didn't have 
the refined omoplata entries that I have now, and I know a lot more about finishing it, but the way that I finish uh, whatever submission that I happen to get in this match, I still do today in the same exact way. But now I have much better mechanics for my omoplata entries. I'm way more confident in them. I think it's one of the best things to get good at, especially for little guys, but also especially for big guys. You know, it's just such a good force amplifier. Great for sweeps, great for submissions. Here's my Marcelo Garcia phase just starting to kick in, except I'm not good at it yet. Um, right there, again, again, I'm fighting this hand, okay, I'm looking yeah, at I this hand, add. but I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually thinking about this one, I'm like fake hand fighting him over here, and you can see I'm already setting that up, there, right there, that was a terrible strip through, way too slow. Now, uh, I gotta tell you guys a secret, okay, this is back in 2013, I'd only been training at Daisy Fresh, which was, you know, bef way before Daisy Fresh was Pedigo Submission fighting for, fuck, it might have been like six months before this tournament, right? Because I got my blue belt pretty quickly, and I th didn't know a lot about, you know, context in jiu-jitsu. So one of the things that I had, um, even back in Michigan, I had this, and I practiced this, was Eddie Bravo's original Rubber Guard oh, DVD. And I know, because I used to do that. I used to play Rubber Guard Lockdown exclusively, and... For the most part, it's not really the best system. I, do, I just genuinely don't think that the system isolated is as effective as other systems that are out there, okay? But I learned how to do an omoplata originally from the Rubber Guard DVD, and I just thought it was one of the fucking stupid things that Eddie Bravo made up, you know? Like, I just thought omoplata was like kung fu move. You know, I thought Eddie Bravo invented the omoplata. <laughs> so, and I still actually use the kung fu move um, to get my omoplata set up sometimes. But now I realize the importance of your knee pressure down in the shoulder to turn their arm and isolate their head as opposed to just trying to get my foot in front of their face. Okay, if you have higher level omoplata mechanics, you don't necessarily have to do the kung fu move. It's actually a lot weaker because there's less of a clamp and less of a bite on the shoulder. And you have less control over their posture, less control over which way they turn. It's not as good, but fucking worked here, didn't it? So he's on my hip, keeping me from kicking out, and now I'm free, bitch. Here comes daddy. No, no. Yes, it's happening. This is the one. Ooh. Oh, I don't want to watch this. Watch it. Now. Keep your eyes open. You know what's coming. Oh, don't do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Children, turn the camera away. Oh, no. <laughs> is an arm supposed to bend like that? No. It's not supposed to do that, is it? Um, you guys wonder why I think belts don't fucking matter? He was a much higher belt than me, and I just broke his fucking limb off. It doesn't matter. The belts don't matter. It's whatever happens in the match, which is kind of come down to... Yeah, what a fucking dick. But it's gonna come down to, uh, you know, specifically what happens in the match, and specifically, a lot of times, who's the better athlete. And I was fucking athletic enough that anyone had to take me decently seriously, except for maybe like a world-class black belt. You know, like a really good black belt would've beat the shit out of me. But uh, your average black belt isn't even good at jujitsu. This is what happens, you know? Like, <laughs> my stand-up was fucking terrible. Um, I'm not in a stance. There's just no point for me to even be standing that long against someone that I know is clearly a better wrestler than me at this point in my career. You know, I'm just like asking to get taken down, and I do get taken down right in the close guard. And, you know, it's a short match. It's only two minutes and 30 seconds roughly, but honestly, my close guard here was pretty terrible. I, I would not stand by the mechanics that I'm displaying in this video. You know, this was just so long ago. I'm wearing a fucking turtleneck rash guard. Okay. <laughs> Um, I could have done a lot of other stuff here to the point where like even if he's letting me up that much th There's a good chance. I just shimmy around behind him now You know what I mean? Because yeah. my, my leg clamp is so much better I understand so much more about how to maneuver off to an angle and how to utilize that angle effectively You know, it's just stuff that this was too early in my career to really intuit um, I do still stand by all the Kimura trap stuff that I was kind of trying to go for uh, I fucking love the Kimura trap. Heath has the like, he's the one who taught me the Kamara Trap system that I use even today, and it's just so different than what a lot of people do. I don't know if he just made it up himself or where he originally learned it from, but it's fucking money. And it's actually a, you know, a big part of the Kamara Trap system that I show. You know, we have more details now because we've been doing jujitsu a lot longer, but absolutely worth checking out. And what then, major mistake this guy does the entire match. He, he stays on his fun. fucking knees. Yeah. Yeah, what the fuck? Get off your fucking knees, you. people. Like, what are you going to do to me on your knees? You know, there's just no real threat that I take seriously from someone who comes in on their knees, okay? And they don't get any real oh, passing threat. We're going to watch it again. Because you see the way I dive across there? Okay, people yeah, that... Um, really nice. it, I still do this. If I really just don't want to fuck around and I want to tap you, Nogi, in a normal plata, 
Uh, the reason I'm diving across is I'm reaching for the far underhook on the shoulder as I come across, okay? And you can see as he rolls over with me, this is able to punch extremely deep on the shoulder. And I miss it at first, but you see I just go right back for it again. And once I get my hips locked up like that, and once I get my arms locked up anywhere, now it's about isolating his shoulders and making his shoulders scarecrow, okay? Because it's like, try to touch your back. When you have your shoulder pretty loose, you can go pretty far up your back. Now scarecrow your arms and try to do something on your back, okay? So that's the mechanics that are going into finishing this. And it takes me a little bit because he is bridging into me. And there's other stuff I could be doing here. I could abandon the submission and actually just come up on top behind him and then probably get in his back again from there and try to choke him or something like that. But this right here, guys, you, if you wanna see me do this recently-ish, I do this in the finals at the Nogi Pan, uh, Pan Americans at Brown Belt, okay? And I fuck that guy's arm up a little bit too. And it's just the same exact move. Um, it's one of the best ways to finish at Nogi is from behind them. So everything's doing fine here. And you can see he tries to actually turn and he tries to sit himself out at the same time as I start to really circle my hips out and away from him. I want to go... <laughs> Dude, that, 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 that is the face angle that backwards. is the face of regret <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna, try and sit out this, on like I this. remember this is actually the worst I had ever hurt someone in a tournament up until this point and if I recall correctly which I very rarely do okay my memory is actually pretty shit um he was he was messed up after this so yeah I know listen Remember, guys, it's just a tournament. You don't have to hurt your opponents out of five, guys. Uh, but that one wasn't my fault, goddammit. He was trying to get away, and he did the exact opposite thing of what you should do. It's like uh, giving someone your arm more for an arm bar and, like, hyperextending your own elbow somehow. It's kind of what he did when he tried to sit out. I didn't win this tournament, by the way. I got knee barred in the next match. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. You tap fucking Dan Barovic. Or, no, you beat Dan Barovic first. And then you go on and you fucking go beat a, either a brown belt or a black belt next. And then I lost to a purple belt who was a world-class purple belt. Okay, so another world-class purple belt in the same division. Uh, Matt Layton, actually. Me and him are good friends now. Uh, but he did actually get an original That's win over me. Yeah, Matt, I think it was Matt Layton at this one, wasn't it? In the Nogi? I have no idea. Because I didn't, I didn't know what to do. He was just so much more technical than me. So that when he tried to roll through um, underneath me to either go reverse De La Hiva or to Baron Bolo me, I just kind of like did the worst possible thing. I tried to like re-bolo him without actually knowing how to do a high level Baron Bolo. And instead he just pulls my knee through and knee bars me. So it was just a, a literal knowledge gap. Like I said, we were so early. We knew so little. We just Dude, drilled everything we actually did so much that it was effective. So... All right, that's the commentary. Uh, technically, I don't have a lot to sh to talk about because my technique sucked. <laughs> you were just getting beat up. <laughs> yeah, the guy was kind of he was winning. You know, he was kind of beating my ass, and then uh, and then he passed on his knees. Yeah. So if you guys are ever out there passing on your knees and you think that is the thing to do, I just wanna. God damn it. <laughs> I just wanna I leave you thumbnail. with one little the like, picture, okay? <laughs> Oh yes, come in, pass on your knees. That is the way to do it. You, this will never happen to you. You're a special snowflake. Okay, that's the end of the video, guys. Uh, thanks, Bird Wiltsy, for joining in. He talked much less shit than I thought he was going to do. I can't believe you made me watch at that. <laughs> it's good. All right. All right. End fucking video. Bye. Have a great time. All right, guys, if you've ever wondered how do I manage to pull off some of the ridiculous bullshit that I do, go ahead and check out our instructionals on bgjfanatics.com. We don't hold any information back when we make an instructional. It's everything we actually do. We cover everything from gi and no gi buzzsaw, how to wrestle your way up to victory, how to assert dominance from back control, even to what sweet nothings you should whisper while you're on their back. And don't forget we have what's probably the most successful knee slice system in the world just sitting up there for free, so you should absolutely go check that out. We also have a Patreon account called Wilty Brothers BJJ, where you can help me and Bird as we try to take over the world with our non-toxicity, alright? We currently have five tiers on offer, and those tiers offer things from uh, early access to videos, to rolling commentaries of your own, to perks in the Discord channel if you guys want to jump in. We have like 700 people in there right now. Absolutely should check it out if you just want to get more involved with me and Bird. And don't forget to check out our Instagram at AndrewWilty46 for some of those sweet, not quite YouTube friendly content. Currently I'm at about 42,000 subscribers and I think Gordon Ryan has 400,000. So uh, 
yeah, let's get to work on that. And lastly, don't forget to check out our affiliate channel, Pedago Submission Fighting. They offer some fucking seriously good, high quality production content, almost like the Daisy Fresh documentary you watched on Flow Grappling, okay? Professional editing, lots of heart and soul put into this. If you guys aren't watching that channel already, what the fuck are you doing with your lives? And guys, like always, don't forget to eat your fucking Panda Express.